In this video, we will discuss some properties of the time reversal operator in quantum mechanics. We will first talk about physical properties, for instance, how certain observables are affected by a time reversal, and then also discuss mathematical properties of anti-unitary operators. As the name suggests, the time reversal operator makes time go backwards, so it makes t go to minus t. As a quantum mechanical operator, it can also act on other operators. Depending on whether we get a minus sign or not, we say that the operator is even or odd under time reversal. So while position is even, velocity is odd, since we have time in the definition. Furthermore, the momentum operator, angular momentum operator and spin operator are all odd under a time reversal. The reason for why spin is odd is not at all obvious. We can motivate it by thinking of spin as a classical magnetic moment generated by electric currents. Under a time reversal, these electric currents would go backwards, which would also flip the magnetic moment. The time reversal operator also has some interesting mathematical properties, which are due to the fact that it is an anti-unitary operator. First of all, the definition of an anti-unitary operator is that it is both unitary and anti-linear. Unitary means that norms are preserved after a transformation, and anti-linear is almost the same as linear, but all coefficients of wave functions get complex conjugated. Now let's go over some additional properties. For instance, the product of two anti-unitary operators is a unitary operator. Since a1 and a2 both preserve norms, their product will also leave the inner product invariant. And a quick calculation shows that applying two anti-unitary operators has the same result as a linear operator. Another way to state this is that the product of an anti-unitary operator and a unitary operator will be an anti-unitary operator. This fact is often used as a trick to write any arbitrary anti-unitary operator, A2, as the product of the complex conjugation operator, K, and some unitary operator. For instance, you can write the time reversal operator as K times U, where K is complex conjugation, and then you just have to find out which unitary operator U is the right one for your system, such that you get the correct time reversal operator. Finally, Inner products of two wave functions get complex conjugated after applying anti-unitary transformations. So if we start with an inner product, psi phi, and apply some anti-unitary operator A, we get phi psi. In order to prove this, we can first use the fact that the inner product of a wave function with itself is invariant under an anti-unitary operation. Next, we write this psi as a superposition of psi1 and psi2 each with some coefficient c. In order to continue, let us calculate the left-hand and right-hand side of this equation separately. The left-hand side is not too difficult, we just have to multiply the terms in the brackets. But for the right-hand side, we have to keep in mind that a is anti-linear, so the coefficients get complex conjugated along the way. The result looks similar to before, but it's not exactly the same. Because we used arbitrary coefficients in the superposition of psi1 and psi2, the left-hand and right-hand side must be equal for any values of c1 and c2. If we compare the first and last terms, they don't give us any new information since we have the inner product of a wave function with itself. But if we compare the other two terms, we find that these two terms and these two terms must be equal, which proves our initial statement. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.